Hello guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be building a budget PC. Yeah, we've got a budget of $1,500 and in that budget we've managed to squeeze in the brand new RTX 4070. Mm -hmm. So this build should be great for like 1440p, 100 FPS plus. Now we have a lot of parts here that we're going to go step by step putting them into the case and you'll come along with us. Really excited to use this graphics card because it's much smaller than the rest of the 40 series. So it's yeah. going to fit easily into this case. But before we can get into the PC build, let's have a quick word from today's sponsor. This video is brought to you by BOBKeys.com. You guys know the drill, you've just finished building your brand new PC, you boot it up and bam, that hideous activate Windows watermark appears. And the worst part is you forgot to budget $200 for an activation key from Microsoft because you spent it all on RGB. But that's okay, because you don't need to spend $200, you can pick one up from today's video sponsor BOBKeys.com for a tenth of the price. The best part is you can use my code TT25 for 25% off, which takes this already cheap Windows 10 Pro key from around $22 to $16. If you're in the UK, that's £13. You place your order, your activation code gets added to your orders page, you whack it into the Windows activation screen, and boom, you're fully activated, no more watermarks being burned into your retinas. TT25 for 25% off, link in description. So a quick look at the case we're going to be building in today. This is the Antec P20C. So it comes with a nice mesh front and it's only $110, which is pretty budget friendly. Yeah, for $110, you actually get a lot of bang for your buck because in this case, you have a three fans already mounted in the front, three 120. So that saves you some money on your fans there. And all we're going to use is three fans for the rest of the case on yep. the top and on the back. Now, when it comes to building a budget PC, a lot of the times people have to sacrifice on RGB. So today we're doing an all black build. Yes. Yeah, is all performance, <laughs> even though RGB makes your PC faster. It does. More it RGB does. equals more FPS. Yes. But anyway, let's go and grab our motherboard and get started. Oh, by the way, we also got this new uh, silicone mat from Gamers Nexus channel. Look how cool that looks. Yeah, it looks awesome. The motherboard we are using today is the B650 Tomahawk Wi-Fi from MSI. And this is actually the first time I think we're using this. Yeah, it's gonna go nicely with the stealthy build because it's all black. Now this is an AM5 board, so it's a little bit more on the expensive side. This board goes for $240, but I mean, look at how many USB ports you get. So get ready to install our CPU. Yeah, so the CPU that we are using today is from AMD. It's the Ryzen 5 7600, and this goes for $220. So it's a really good budget CPU. Yeah, it's a great pairing with the 4070. It's probably the best AMD has to offer in terms of like value for money at yeah. the moment. Obviously the motherboard is a little bit more on the expensive side, but yeah, that's just the nature of AM5 at the moment. So line the arrow up with the top arrow right here. Drop that into place. And, and that should pop flip that down. right off. Yep. There we go. Oh, by the way, if you decide to pick this chip up, you do get a fan that already comes with the chip if you wanted to use this one, but we are not going to be using this today. Yeah, technically makes it even better value for $220, but it does run a little bit hot with the stock cooler. You could certainly get away with it. We're just gonna go for something a bit bigger. So next up is our RAM. This is the Corsair Vengeance DDR5 RAM, and I'm actually a really big fan of their RAM. This one looks very stealthy. There's no RGB on this. Mm -hmm. You get 32 gigs for $110. It's running at 5,600 megahertz, which I think is quite good value. Yeah, for 32 gigs for that price, that's great. Yeah. Yeah, they look so nice. They just look clean, you know what I mean? So we'll open up our slots. So we're gonna be using slot two and four. My hands are shaking because I've had so much coffee today. All right, that's it. Number two. Number two. I really like this um, the silicone mat. The black pops from it so, so yeah, well. Yeah, the contrast know? is actually really good. Next up is our NVMe. Would you like to put it in? Yes. So we're gonna be using the XPG Gamex S50 Lite. You can basically use any one terabyte NVMe SSD for this build. They usually run around $70. Sometimes you can get them on sale for 60 as well. So definitely look out. Okay, so we'll slot our M.2 into here. Unlatch this. Latch. There we go. Okay, so that's everything in the motherboard. Let's grab the case. Goodbye gamer Nexus Matt. Hello, lazy Susan. <laughs> Put her on down. Oh, if you're wondering what this is, by the way, this is a GPU support bracket. You definitely probably will not need that with the uh, 4070 not. because no, it's, it's, a a lot very, smaller. it's a very <laughs> light card. The case already has standoffs in it, so you don't have to worry about that. It's not lined up. You did a horrible job. There oh. <laughs> you go. Oh, by the way, guys, we got to see our new place today. We did. It looks so cool. It is way nicer 
and bigger than we even expected. I'll put up some footage so you guys can have a look at it. We move in just under a month, so we have lots of preparations to do. And we'll probably be doing some vlogs as well when we build the new office and the new gaming setups. The reason why we went for this apartment is because it can fit our 85 inch TV. Very important. <laughs> Very important for Nay's gaming experience. That was the last screw. So onto the fans. We're gonna be using the Antec Storm fans. These are 120 millimeter. And they only cost $30 for a pack of three. So these are really good budget-friendly fans. So uh, for this build, we're only going to be putting two of the fans up on the top and one in the back. And then, like I said previously, we don't have to worry about the fans on the front because they're already there. I will grab the fan screws. Oh, you're getting the screws this time? Wow. So what can people expect with this uh, PC gear when it comes to gaming? What kind of frames and stuff? So obviously it depends on the games you're going to be playing. We are going to be doing some benchmarks later on. So if you want to see the exact performance, then make sure you watch till the end. All right, so that fan's in. Move on to the top. Yep. And fan number three. We got all the fans in the case. Now uh, let's move on to the PSU. So for this build, we're gonna be using the XPG Core Reactor 750 watt gold. Pretty much any 750 watt power supply is gonna be fine for this kind of build. Just make sure it's gold rated. Should run you around hundred dollars. This one's actually modular. So it's quite nice if you're limited on like space for cable management, you can pick and choose which cables you want. And you can see on the back here, we have a removable bracket. So we're gonna attach this to the PSU and then slide it on it. While we're around the back, by the way, quick look at storage. So the space for two SSDs here, and there's also a hard drive cage down there as well. So decent space for storage. There's also a lot of options for cable management in this case. You have a lot of cable grommets out here in the back. And a bunch of Velcro as well. Yeah, and a decent amount of clearance up at the top to get your cables through. Yeah, we'll get rid of our hard drive cage because we're not going to be using it in this build. So it should free up some space for more cables. If <laughs> you can't see them, are they really there? <laughs> so we'll get a few of our cables plugged in because it's just going to make it a bit easier later on when we have other stuff inside the case. So this big one is our motherboard cable. So we're probably going to end up routing it through here. This one right here is our CPU cable. So we'll run this up the side here up to the CPU socket and then GPU cable. It's probably going to end up coming up through the bottom. There is actually some cable grommets under here. I will say the great thing about doing a budget PC is you don't have as many cables as you would typically. It's always RGB fans. <laughs> They're like the worst. This closest socket you see right here next to the CPU, that's going to be our CPU cable. All of the cables you see right here are basically for the front panel. So you've got like your USB-C, you've got USB 3.0, there's your audio there and also all your buttons as well, like the power button. We'll feed those through to the front. Oh, speaking of the top IO, you can see we've got the power and reset button. We've got two USB 3 ports. We have a headphone and mic jack and a USB type C. We'll give you guys a closer look on the top down in case anybody out there is building their PC for the first time and you want a little help plugging in your cable. So the cable that I have right here, this is the USB-C. It's going to plug directly into this port right here. There we go. The next cable that we have is the USB 3. Now typically a lot of the motherboards have it right here, but for some reason it's all the way down here at the bottom. So we'll plug that one in. And the cables that I have here, these are the front panel connectors. Now the most important cable is going to be at your power switch, which is uh, this one. So we have our power switch here. We're going to install it into the pins right down here. It's going to be the last two of these pins here. So we'll also put up a diagram for you guys for this particular motherboard. So if you wanted to get a closer look, that's where it goes. Next, we're gonna plug in the reset cable. This is gonna go underneath the cable that we just plugged in. Next up, we have our power LED cables. So you're gonna plug in your positive one at the top left and your negative is going to go on the right side. And then the last cable that we have is our HD LED and that's going to be plugged in underneath the pins that we just plugged in. That is all of our cables plugged in. And then the last cable that we have is our HD audio, which is right here. And that's going to plug in to this little pin set down here. So that's that cable. Next up is our CPU cooler. So we're gonna go with an air cooler for this build. This is the Deepcool AS500 Plus. It's pretty chunky and it only costs $60. Yeah, it's not really necessary to go with an AIO for this chip because it doesn't get really hot. And AIOs can cost around $100 to $200 or even more sometimes. So this is a great budget air cooler. Yeah, and you also get a little bit of RGB ah, on it as yes, well. Yes, you do. So first off, we need to take off the stock retention brackets and then we will switch those out for the Deepcool ones. 
So these just pop off. So we want to leave the actual back plate on there because we're going to be using that. Yeah, make sure you keep this bracket somewhere safe as well. Now, before we can put the brackets on, we have to put these little standoffs into the back plate. So just screw them on. And then we have the brackets that sit right on top of those. Like that. Yep. And then finally, you just need to put on these little thumb screws to hold everything in place. Next, we're going to put on our thermal paste. Now, normally this AIO comes pre-installed with thermal paste on it, but we used this in a previous build. We have some here. We're going to put it on and then we'll pop that on. Now, before we put this onto the CPU, we need to take off these fans because otherwise we're not going to be able to access the screws. So to do that, all you need to do is just pull these little clips towards you and then they should just pop off like that. So that's one and they'll probably fall off, but don't worry, you can just put them back on. And then, yeah, you can just see these line up with these screws here. So we'll place this down. You don't want to go crazy on tightening these. Like obviously you want them tight, but you don't want to crank it all the way down. That's good. And then we can pop our fans back on. Now your fans are going to want to be pointing towards the rear of the case. So you can see this side of the fan, the one with the hub on, you want that pointing this way. And then when you put the second one on, you also want it pointing the same way as well. Hook that back over there. Do take note of where your cable is going as well. You probably want it towards the top or the rear. Oh yeah, we need to plug in our motherboard cable as well. Oh yeah. Can't forget that. All that's left to do now is to put the GPU. So GPU we're gonna be using is the RTX 4070. This one is from MSI, it's the Ventus 3X. So you've got the triple fans. Now you could just mount this straight into the case horizontally like you normally would. However, I think we're gonna use a vertical bracket just because this is quite a nice looking GPU and it would be nice to display the front of it. So that's what our GPU looks like. These vertical brackets range from between like 40 to like $100 depending on which one you get. So obviously it's up to you whether you want to do that. It's completely aesthetic. Really. I guess it's more so of a bonus part that we yeah. threw in this video in case anybody wanted to pick one of these up. Let me show you a comparison of our older bracket that we used to have. So this is the old one that we used to have. Look how flimsy this is. It's just not that good for cards, especially the 40 series cards, considering how big they are. This is a lot sturdier. Yeah, you want to make sure you get one with a PCI 4.0 cable as well, not 3.0 if you're going to be using any like new GPU. Now for size comparison, look at the difference between the 4070 <laughs> and the 4080. That is just a huge difference, especially from the side. Look at that. Yeah, it's nuts. It's kind of like the old 30 series cards, know, right? honestly. The good old days when they used to fit in the cases with no problems. <laughs> Price wise, you're looking at $600 for this particular model, which is not too bad. You're getting roughly the same performance as an RTX 3080, but this draws way less power. And you also get like DLSS3 with frame generation as well. So if that matters to you, then yeah, it's a good choice. Now, a really cool feature on this GPU bracket is the fact that you can move it back and forth depending on how much room you need. And then you can lock it with these little mechanisms here. And then you could also move it forward and back by adjusting that. So depending how far you want it in your case, you can adjust pretty much all of it. Yeah, super cool. We'll get this placed on here. Wow, this GPU is so light. And only one eight pin PCIe connector as yeah. well. Look at that, just enough room. Awesome. Looking good. Now that I'm looking at the case, I feel like this would be a good time to actually pull the GPU out more because I feel like it's tucked in a little bit more. And since we're using that bracket that we got, we can actually do that. So I think it looks pretty good there. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Obviously, bear in mind, you want decent breathing room against the glass. So the closer you bring it, probably the slightly worst temps you're gonna get. So we're almost there. I think all we've got to do is just plug in the GPU cable and then just the fan cables. Uh, I do have a fan hub here. So I'm basically just gonna plug that into the motherboard and then plug everything into this around the back. Some of the fans are daisy chainable as well. Okay, so the GPU power connector is right there. We've got two fan cables from these fans right here. So I'm gonna plug these up here and we'll pull the rest of those cables through the back. This little thing is the RGB hub from the CPU caller. So this just needs a SATA power connector. These three cables right here, these are for the three front fans. So that was the hub I was telling you guys about. So I've basically just plugged that into the motherboard and it has a bunch of fan headers coming off it. So it saves you having to run loads of cables onto your motherboard and it looking messy. So I'll plug them into there. And then the only other fans we've got left are the two at the top and the one at the back. So that's these ones. And these are actually daisy chainable. 
So if I plug one of these into here, we can then just daisy chain the rest of them off of each other. Okay, so we got the last cable plugged in. Yeah, should be everything. I mean, there are some tie downs here that you can use for cable management. Yeah, we don't really have that many cables in this build, which is good. Yeah, if this is going to be like your actual build, I'd probably recommend zip tying some stuff in case you want to add like extra storage later. It just makes things easier. I'll pop this on. Yeah. You think it's going to boot? Let's find out. I'm going to plug it in. Are you ready? Yes, count Three, down. two, one, action. Oh, yeah, there Yay. we go. All the fans are working. Oh, we got the little RGB. On the RGB as well. You can change the color of the RGB with the little hub. You just need to press the button in. Are the front fans working? Yes, yeah. they are. It's, it's so weird seeing a PC that doesn't have a bunch of RGB in yeah, it. Yeah, I know. It looks really <laughs> stealthy. It does. It looks great for a budget build. Now that we know everything is working in the PC, it is time for... B-roll and benchmarks. So first up is Doom Eternal. We're running 1440p ultra preset ray tracing along with DLSS set to quality. And we're getting around 185 FPS on average, plenty enough to max out most 1440p monitors. Next up is Hogwarts Legacy. Now this is arguably much more difficult to run being a newer game, but at 1440p on ultra ray tracing with DLSS set to quality and frame generation enabled, we got an average of 106 FPS. Onto Apex Legends, here we are running again 1440p, this time using high settings, and our average was a little under 200 FPS, so more than enough to max out most competitive gaming monitors a very smooth experience indeed up next is forza horizon 5 now this is a very well optimized game we're at 1440p ultra preset with dlss set to quality and we were seeing an average of around 176 fps again pretty crazy frame rates here no problems at all for this system and finally call of duty warzone i decided to run this at 1440p high settings with dlss set to performance mode and our average was 137 fps which is right around that sweet spot for competitive gaming on 144 hertz monitor now that we are finished with the build, what are your first impressions of the PC case? Is there anything you would change? Something that you didn't like? Something that stood out to you? I think like airflow is obviously very good in this case because of the mesh front. Yeah. I would probably add a little bit more RGB <laughs> myself. There's not much money wasted here on like RGB components. Yeah. So you're basically getting the best bang for the book that you can and best, I guess value to performance ratio. But anyways, that about wraps it up for today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the budget build. The people are always asking on our YouTube channel, on Instagram, on TikTok, can you please do a budget build? So hopefully this will help someone out there. And if you like the video, give it a big a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe if you knew. We have lots more content coming like this. I think soon as well, we're gonna try and do like a mega budget build. Gonna like scrounge eBay or Craigslist and <laughs> see what we can find. Facebook Marketplace. Thanks for watching guys. We'll catch you all in the next one.